So welcome back everyone, Mike here. I am out here on the road this afternoon and the sun is trying to peek through the clouds. It's been several days since I saw the sun, so that's pretty nice, although it is pretty cold. It's about 29 degrees right now and it looks like it's going to stay cold right through the weekend, which is a good thing. I'll explain why in just a bit, but I wanted to take this opportunity to uh, kind of go over some updates and answer some questions that people have been asking. And one of those questions is, a lot of people have been asking about the new Ford Bronco. I mentioned a while back that we reserved a new Bronco. Now that does not mean that you ordered it. All that means is you reserve the option to order, I guess. And it kind of puts you in line because there's a lot of demand for that vehicle. And as of, what day was it? Last week one day, I was able to go in and actually order the new Bronco. A lot of people have been seeing the Bronco Sport out on the road because they're available right now, I guess, or they're starting to trickle in. And so people are asking when we're gonna get ours. There's a difference between the Bronco Sport and just the Bronco. I'll show you a couple pictures of the two and you'll get an idea of what I mean. Yeah, so the front ends look pretty much the same uh, the way the Bronco is across the grill, but they're definitely two different looking vehicles. The full size Bronco, I'm calling it, that's the one we're gonna get. Uh, we ordered it with pretty much everything that we wanted on it. And usually for vehicles, uh, I don't know, I like earth tones, kind of quiet colors, but I went all out on this one. I don't know, called them midlife crisis or whatever, but I ordered the Rapid Red. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. So I have been a fan of the Ford Bronco forever. Uh, pretty much the 70s. Uh, I, I love the Ford Bronco. You know, when I was a kid, I always wanted one and I was never able to get one. And I actually emailed Ford several times over the years. I knew they didn't really care about it, but uh, I emailed them asking why they did not bring back the Ford Bronco. And uh, they finally did, which is a good thing. Now, we like our Jeep. As you know, we have a 2017 JKU, it's a Sahara. And we have 35 inch tires on it, three and a half inch JKS lift. Really like the vehicle, but I do like Broncos as well. So we're gonna keep the Jeep for a while at least. Uh, I'd like to do some videos kind of comparing the two. Now the Bronco will come standard, not standard, it's an option, but it'll come from the factory with 35 inch tires, which I think is a great thing because everybody that buys a new Jeep, not everyone, but most people, you know, they get a Jeep and you got brand new wheels and tires on it and you take them off and you spend a couple grand on new wheels, new tires, and a couple inches of lift. But with the Ford Bronco, you can get it that way right from the factory. So uh, I'm really excited about it, I am. Usually vehicles for us, the Jeep was the first one that was kind of like, I really like that, you know what I mean? And I love my F-150, I do. But they're just a, uh, a necessity for us. We do a lot of running around. But it's been a long time since I was uh, excited about a vehicle. When we're going to get it, I have no idea. Uh, my best guess would be the middle of summer. I'm not sure. Uh, looking at my reservation number, I reserved it right after you are able to do so. And I think my number was like 714. And I know there's thousands of them that are reserved now. And as a matter of fact, if you try to order one now, you won't, don't tell you right off the bat, you won't get it until 2022 so that's the story on the ford bronco pretty excited about that and one thing that's really nice now um, as you know our oldest son hunter he has autism he's nonverbal, and he used to go to a day program and it was getting to the point where we don't think he enjoyed it that much and uh, that's when covid started and all that mess 
and so he was staying home and he has really really seemed to thrive just being at home with Melissa she keeps him busy all day and uh, it's a good thing but my point of all this is with him being home now that's a lot less miles that we put on vehicles especially the Jeep uh, this entire year I don't know Melissa probably put 5,000 6,000 miles on the Jeep the truck we put considerable amount this year just because we went out west uh, you know Glacier National Park Yellowstone all over that one trip I think was 5,500 miles so we did more in those two weeks in this truck than Melissa did in the Jeep in the entire year some other updates I want to talk about the uh, new building uh, a lot of things going to be happening very soon on the new building. Yesterday, I met the concrete guy. I've known him for years. Uh, we came up with a good plan for the concrete. The plumber is coming to help on uh, Saturday. Actually, I'll be helping the plumber. I mentioned the other day in a video that uh, one of the subscribers to our channel, he a, has a plumbing business in the Pittsburgh area, and he offered to come help. No charge at all, but I told him I'm definitely going to pay him and uh, so he's going to come out Saturday and we'll be roughing in the plumbing and then I'll get the floor ready for the radiant floor heat and all that and get the concrete poured and uh, that's all going to start happening pretty quick inside it's frozen right now the ground's frozen so I will have to get some heat in there to get things thawed out uh, but I had a good visit there with the concrete guy yesterday I love talking to people that are real good at what they do you know and I've seen his work like I said he's been doing it for 35 years but all those little questions that are in your head, you know, I've done all that type of work, but just little bits and pieces here and there, you know, jack of all trades, master of none, that's me in a nutshell. And uh, so it's nice to be able to pick their brain and they always have little tricks and things that can save you some time and some money. But the building itself, just inside, is gonna be about 50 yards of concrete, actually a little bit more. We're going to go five inches thick, except in between the doorways. We'll go six inches thick there. Uh, he suggested that because uh, using the radiant floor heat, it's hard to get the mesh, you know, up above the tubing. And uh, so we'll put fiber in it and all that, but go a little bit thicker. Like that excavator is uh, 13,000 pounds, so we want to go a little bit thicker. I'll be parking it inside. Eventually, we will build probably, uh, probably next summer, actually, just a big roof you know big shelter another building similar to what we have but just something to park the excavator under some tractor attachments things like that and we will be starting soon on the sawmill shed finally but there's a lot of things uh going to be happening there is so i'm pretty excited about all that the sawmill shed melissa and i will build it's going to be pretty basic just to get it under roof uh right now i've been covering it with a tarp it's kind of a pain in the neck i mean it works out all right but there's just a lot of things we need to do and as we get closer to spring uh, you'll see a lot of things happening last couple weeks you know I just make videos on what we do when we do it but uh, you know it gets dark early the weather hasn't been cooperating but uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of work inside the new building and uh, things are really gonna take off here in the next couple weeks I'm pretty excited about that and man it, I was telling you about uh, it's cold right now it's gonna stay cold right through the weekend uh, the other day in a video, in the intro, I had my drone flying over from down where those red pines and the Norway spruce are, and I got to looking at that when I was editing it, and man, I found like 15 more dead red pines. So hopefully uh, sometime this weekend, it should stay nice and frozen, I want to go down in there and get a bunch of them out. I mean, if I could get five, six trees out of the woods, I usually get about eight, ten footers. Uh, yeah, eight, ten foot logs out of each tree. So, I mean, if I could get five of them out of the woods, that would be 40 logs. Uh, that's what I want to do because those pines are just, they're dying. I mean, all the ones behind my mom's house, they've been dead for years. There's only a few left standing over there. And then uh, on the other side, on our side, uh, they're really starting to die now. And the oaks end up taking over. That's what's happening down there as well. Something may be killing them off. I don't know, but I swear they just have a lifespan to them and they have reached that point. And we always get the comments about planting trees. I'm actually thinking about planting some, a bunch of trees. I am. I said I never do that because uh, Mother Nature does a better job than I could anyway around here. They just start growing. But with the excavator, there's some areas I'd like to clean up 
and I may do a couple, uh, you know, four or five acres of maybe red pine again. You know, that's what they did in the 50s around here, and that's what I'm using for lumber today. So I may do that. Uh, I need to start looking around where you can get them. You know, I'm 54 years old, so I probably won't see the benefits of it, but uh, if I could get something fast growing there, figure it out, I don't know. But yeah, I need to look into that. Red pine, maybe some hemlock, maybe even some white pine. I don't know, but it's good for, uh, I like keeping our our place uh, real diversified when it comes to trees. And over time, it's just getting where it's all gonna be uh, big oaks is what it'll be. And there's nothing wrong with that, but as far as wildlife and things like that, it doesn't do a lot for them. Yeah, you get the acorns, but for deer and all the small butt critters and stuff like that, uh, you need that smaller stuff. So that's something else we'll be working on in the future is planting some pine trees. But I think that's about it. I've been rambling on here long enough, but those are the updates. The Ford Bronco, what's happening with the building. Uh, gonna get some of that red pine out of the wood for the sawmill. When I'm doing that, I'll probably take both the tractor and the excavator, get them down in the woods there. It's a long way from the house, but I can use the excavator to kind of get logs out of a tough spot. And I also have the tractor with that skidding winch, but I like carrying the logs out of the woods. Even when it's frozen, uh, like this you still kind of tear everything up because it's not like we have a real deep frost But I would like to get a bunch of them out of the woods because that red pine is what we're going to do the whole interior of the uh, Garage in the new building. It'll just be rough cut pine in there And then the game room part will be all finished hardwoods. So that's the plan, but I need a bunch of that red pine uh, But I think that's about it. Yeah, those are the updates if you have anything you'd like to know or questions Leave them in the comments or shoot us an email. We do our best to uh, get back to people. Sometimes it's a few weeks or even months, uh, but we get back to people. And one more thing, we've got mugs. Uh, I'll show you a picture of the mugs right now. They're on our website. If you're interested, you can go there and get yourself a mug. Uh, Melissa made a Facebook post the other day, and I think we sold like 75 of them the first day, but we got 100 and. 144 of them and if they sell out we'll get more we had troubles getting them for a while but uh, they're back up and running and everything now so we can get them pretty quick but i think that's about it i kind of enjoy doing videos like this every once in a while because you can answer a whole bunch of comments just by talking to the camera so like i always say if you enjoy these videos please hit the like button click subscribe and share them with your friends thanks